Hey everyone, Keith here at KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. So I'm going to flip this around. So this is a 41 inch seam that I'm getting ready to bondo. And what I wanted to show is how I do this. And I don't know if you're going to be able to tell. I've got a still shot that might be a little bit better. But if you can see, I create a little bit of a valley. And you can see that's not very deep because I don't want uh, a thick amount of bondo but I also want to be able to be bridging over that seam. So I don't want to sand that seam just smooth and put Bondo over it. Uh, for me, because I don't want that seam to ghost through, and I haven't had any, is I want to have a little bit of a groove, kind of a valley, if you will, that extends from about here to about where my thumb is. Eh, about in that area there. And so that's how far my Bondo is going to bridge. That way I know I've got a good amount of <clears throat> Bondo that is bridging over the top of that seam and that will prevent, hopefully, that seam from ghosting through. And I use an angle grinder with the 50 grit sanding disc to create that valley. And if you remember on a previous video, I do have some one inch or half inch square tubing uh, as supports um, that I put underneath there in about three places. So, I'm going to get the Bondo put on there and I will continue. And then I will be using, because of the amount I'm going to need to be mixing up, I'm going to use a larger Bondo spreader to do my mixing. And I'm going to get chastised for this. It's a drywall knife. I think there's probably another name for it. But once I get the Bondo put on there, I'm going to be able to go across that and give me a fairly smooth finish, which just saves me a little bit of uh, sanding time. So I'm gonna get some mixed up. It takes a little bit of time, but eventually you'll get comfortable with knowing how much Bondo to mix up for uh, the project at hand. All right, so I try to get my Bondo in a group like that. That will help me determine how much hardener that I wanna to add to it. I'm gonna add just a little drop, as I said, of resin. That's going to be about enough. I don't know if you can see how much I added in there. Just about a quarter size drop. Always remember when you're mixing Bondo, don't stir it because that incorporates air. Just press it down as you see that I'm doing here. So for that amount, I'm going to add in that much cream hardener. That should give me enough working time to be able to get that seam covered properly and keep mixing that hardener in until you have one solid uniform color and no more streaks of hardener. Now, what's important to me is that first layer, I'm going to get pressed in to the pores as good as possible for as far out as I know that I'm going to feather those edges. Getting that pressed into the pores of the wood, I know that I'm going to get my best adhesion. As I'm applying the Bondo, I'm being aware of where that valley is, and that's where I need the buildup. So I'm running it very thin along the outside edges, and I'm making sure that I have a little bit or more of that buildup <clears throat> where that valley is. So now that I have all the Bondo on the surface and fairly smooth, I'm going to take my drywall knife. I'm going to cross, come across that. It's going to tell me if I have any low spots in which I'll add any excess Bondo back into there, draw my knife back across it, get it nice and smooth, and make that job of sanding a lot easier. If I do need to add a little bit more, um, I still need to Bondo my edges. So if I do find that I've got some low spots um, when I'm putting some Bondo, on my edges, then I'll be able to fill in those areas that might be a little bit low. So now that the Bondo has dried, it's time to start sanding. So I put 80 grit on my orbital sander, and that's to knock down that initial... For those of you who have sanded Bondo, you know that there's, there's kind of like a skim coat on the top of the Bondo, which uh, will tend to clog up uh, your sandpaper 
And so I'm using 80 grit for one to knock down uh, the highs, and then I'm also using that 80 grit two to knock down that initial uh, skim coat, if you will, that is on the top of that Bondo. So you wanna keep an eye on your sandpaper and see if it starts to load up. Uh, if it does, uh, once you get through that first layer, then I'm gonna keep my 80 grit on there. I'm gonna feather out my edges first. I do not want any hard lines on those edges. So I'm gonna spend some time of getting that feathered out. Then I'm going to use that 80 grit uh, really to kind of give me that initial knockdown of, of any highs and start to get it smoothed over. So what I have here are two sanding boards. That one is, I believe that's a 14 inch. This one is um, an 11 inch. Normally I would like to use this one, but I don't have any paper for it. So I have 80 grit that I'm going to put on this sanding board. And the reason I like to use this is because this does a really good job of just cutting down the high spots only. Whereas my orbital sander is going to tend to want to follow the contour. And so uh, the sanding board, uh, to me, I really like to use it because it cuts down um, those high spots. So now I'm just using my sanding board. And you can see that I'm going in different directions. I'll, I'll angle about 45 one direction, and then I'll change and angle 45 the other direction. Uh, that helps with basically just smoothing everything down and that's really all I'm trying to do is just to cut down all of those high spots to give me about the smoothest surface that I can get. So I know right in this area right here I have a little bit of a low area. The rest of it feels really good. I spend a lot of time feathering these edges out. I do not want a hard line on any of my edges. I'm going to make sure that those are feathered into the MDF. So my feathered edges feel really well, feel really good. The seam feels really good, but I do have a little bit of a low area right here. Now, how forgiving is um, the resin and how far down do you need to sand? So initially, I'm, I'm a former body man by trade, which has been like 40 years ago. Um, but whenever we were sanding down Bondo, man, I mean, that had to, you could, you had to run your hand across there and absolutely feel nothing. It had to be absolutely perfectly smooth. One of the things I learned from Kenny Draculis with RK3 Designs is it's a lot more forgiving than I thought it was. So if you feel just a little bit of a raise in that area, <clears throat> by the time you get your resin poured out, especially when you put down your color coat and then you add your art coat on top of that. Remember, you've got about a total of an eighth inch of buildup. Um, and it's not going to show. If you have too much of a hump right here, keep in mind what type of design. If you're using a lot of metallics and you have too much of a hump, it's too high right here, those metallics are gonna to wanna to tend to flow down on either side, and that may give you kind of a shadow look across there. So, how far do you need to sand it? Does it need to be absolutely perfectly smooth? Um, you need to get it as, as smooth as you can. Um, it is forgiving to where you can have a little bit of a hump there, and I can feel just a little bit of a raise. Knowing the type of design I'm using on this particular one is going to be primarily white and not a lot of uh, metallics, so I don't have to worry about those metallics wanting to flow down on each side of where that's raised. So uh, I'm going to stop here with this. I'm going to finish up getting my edges cleaned up. And then when I bondo my edges, I'm going to put a little bit more in here just to fill that in just a little bit. That would probably be OK with uh, the epoxy self-leveling. But uh, I just don't want to take a chance with this area right here. It feels just a little bit low. So we'll stop there. And uh, I'll come back when I'm ready to uh, fill that in and finish that up. Otherwise. Uh, right now it feels really good. Okay, so I've added Bondo to all of my edges. Oops. <clears throat> and I have those sanded down. And while I had the Bondo out <clears throat> to Bondo those edges, I also 
added more into this area, which was a low area. I apologize. I thought I had my camera uh, video rolling, and I didn't. So what I first uh, started doing is I've uh, knocked that down with 80 grit. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get my sanding block out because I need to feather uh, this new area of Bondo into the existing. I've already feathered into the MDF on both sides. So now I'm going to get my sanding block out. I can tell I still have a little bit of a low area right here, but I'm going to get my sanding block out and get all of this uh, feathered in and uh, melted in together. So while I'm getting this last area sanded down, I, I guess I just can't stress enough um, to prep properly before pouring your epoxy resin. Um, to me, and I'll say this over and over again, the epoxy is simply a reflection of the prep work below it and the durability and how long that's going to last all depends on how properly that you prep your surface. So take the time and prep properly. All right, <clears throat> now that I've got that knocked down, feels really good. So now I'm going to go over with some 120 grit paper and I'm okay with not putting this on my uh, sanding board. I'm going to go over this with my orbital sander and the 120 is basically to take out the 60 and the 80 grit sand scratches and then I'll go over that with 220 to take out the 120 scratches and then uh, that'll be ready for primer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move the camera in here a little bit closer. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. If I can get the glare in there just right. But right in this area, if you can see the pinholes that are in there. So that's fairly common when using Bondo. So I'm gonna look over the area really closely. There's a few pinholes right here. Now, will the epoxy fill those in? very possibly, but for me, I don't want to take a chance. So for those pinholes, you always have a choice of mixing up some more Bondo or you can get a product called Spot Putty. And this is made by Bondo. It's a glazing and spot putty. This is a lacquer based uh, spot putty and it's designed specifically for filling in very small scratches and also these pinholes. You don't want to use this as a buildup uh, by any means, just something that's very thin that's going to fill in pinholes and maybe any small sand scratches that you have. So, one tube of this would actually last you quite a while. So I'm just going to get some of that. I'm going to go different directions to make sure I have those pinholes filled in. And again, I don't want to put it on very thick. I just want enough to fill in those pinholes. So I had those pinholes there. I have a couple of them right here. You can also go around your edges and see if you have any pinholes in your edges of where you ran your Bondo. All right, so I got my pinholes filled. That's not gonna take very long to dry. <clears throat> you can see in this area here where it's very light colored is dry. You can see over here where it's a little bit thicker that hasn't dried yet. So usually in about 15 minutes, that's ready to be sanded. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> that is how, that's how I cover a seam. So, <clears throat> you'll remember in the beginning, I create somewhat of a valley, and it wasn't very deep, as you saw as I put the straight edge across there. But, it's enough of a valley that I have bridged across that eighth inch seam to the point of about that wide. So, it's very difficult for that 1 8 inch seam, which is down below that Bondo, to ghost through. And the reason I put those braces underneath there is to prevent any flex in this area where the seam is. 
where that seam could crack. So for me, this has worked really well to uh, eliminate any chance of that seam ghosting through on me. So that's, that's how I fill a seam. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. And once again, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs. And uh, that's all I have for you. Take care, and uh, we'll see you next time. So here's a sneak peek of the finished product, and that's exactly where the seam was, right up along through there. Once again, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs out of Eagle, Nebraska. Thank you again for watching. Please click the like and subscribe button. Take care, and have a great day.